what? There is nothing like I'm hiding the source of my wealth, my yeah. brother. It's in your face. What is it? It is like, you know, I have some landmarks that you can't miss. Okay, it's there. I know of number one place. Okay, okay. there's yeah, Swales, there's uh, other buildings there, there's zoos, there are things that I'm doing in the country, okay? I'm, I'm not saying that I want to hide it. Zoos, okay? are they making money? Well, I just built the first private zoo, okay? Yeah. And we're about to open it, you know? Uh, just, You're about to open it? Yeah, just for the tigers, too, you know? But we, he said it here for the first time, though. Well, yeah. For the, <laughs> okay. For the, well, well, I, if there is anyone, maybe you should find them for me, but I, mm -hmm. I haven't seen... Uh, people interested in creating, you know, um, um, some sort of accommodation for animals, you know, where we want to take it to a different level in terms of tourism. Right. And then, then that, that was the main aim, why I did that. It's an investment. I mean, I followed that story. I, yeah, it's followed, an investment. We need to respect you know, that investment. You know, right. you, you need to respect the investment. That's what I'm saying, that even if the country turns their back on me and say that, oh, all your things that you did, we don't know where you got the money from, so we're seizing it. Well, what do I, what, what do I have? You know, but one thing you should remember is that I went from digging the ground by putting the block, putting the concrete, I sweat, I, I stood in the sun, I built it, I did it. And I want the youth to replicate that. I want the people in Ghana to be doing the same. We always don't have to sit here and watch somebody to come from outside before a building can come up. Okay? We, we can't afford to buy a building. This is the reason why we want to create a middle income economy. Mm. So we're living a fair life. This, it would reduce the jealousy, it reduce, you know, I, a lot of people are jealous, but I don't blame them. Mm. And I'm not fighting them. And as much as you don't like me, I can understand you. Because if, yes, if you don't have it at all, and I have it, then you have to ask yourself, how did I get it? Mm. Do you understand what I'm saying? And I'm trying to hint you that, you know, wisdom is one of the main things that has acquired my wealth. Because, I, you know, I, I use I, my I mind more than my pocket. Yo, so it's another beautiful brand new day, brand new night, depending on wherever you are watching me from. My name is Jimmy Ruff. Kindly subscribe to this channel, like, comment, and always stay connected for on time. Now, not be the alcohol, aka cheddar, aka, aka Freedom Jacob Caesar, is the one trending at the moment. And for the first time, I think I've never seen any presidential aspirant outside you know who is coming as independent or coming outside the MPP and the NDC political party being so popular like how Cheddar he's been you know Charlie I've never seen that and I don't know I don't know but I believe it's about the fact that he's a youth like he's a young man the fact that he's a young man and you know Cheddar has always been popular yeah <clears throat> Cheddar is has always been a popular millionaire from Ghana, one of the richest men from Ghana. And this time around, he happens to be a young man. He happens to be a young man. Like, he got a swag, bro. He has the swag. He, like, <clears throat> I've watched uh, some of his interviews. Like, I've watched uh, some of his interviews, and I, like, I really admire his intelligence. I really admire his intelligence and I see him as, you know, capable. Yeah, I see Shada as capable. You know, all these years we've been complaining about the MPP and NDC, you know, like I told you before that ever since, uh, it's not about me telling you, it's, it's the fact. Since Kwame Nkrumah, almost all the political parties that has ruled Ghana is either MPP or NDC, majority of them. Almost all of them, apart from uh, Ila Limam, who came. Even with that one, it was Jerry John Rollins that gave him the chance to be. It was Flight Lieutenant Jerry John Rollins that gave him the chance to become the president of Ghana. And you know, he, I think he ruled for some couple of months and uh, some months. Yeah, he ruled for some months, and you know, got uh, got overthrown by Jerry John Rollins. Yeah. Now, I don't know. I don't know how some Ghanaians can be hypocritical. Yeah, when you go on social media, yeah, almost everybody kind of loves Shada. Almost all the youth, like almost all my age mates, we the young boys and everybody, we love Shada. We, we like, we kind of <clears throat> see, like we kind of have some belief in Shada. We believe in Shada. I'm not saying all of us, because when you are, when uh, the distant, uh, TV3 conducted their polls on social media. You know, we definitely had some MPP win and NDC getting some votes, and you know, all these people getting some votes. But at the end of the day, Chada was the one that took the lead. Yeah, 
even though the gap wasn't that big the gap between mpp and i mean ndc and uh the new force wasn't that big but i think yeah i really see that people really believe in him charlie chada is a very big man and i don't seem to get that like now that he's becoming popular now that he has you know stated now that he has you know expressed his interest of becoming a president of ghana people are now questioning his source of uh worth the source the source of his riches the source of his money and the fact that these people politics the fact that some Ghanaians and i mean you know some people in government or some politicians are now questioning the source of his money really shows how incompetent we are as a country it really shows how incompetent we are as a country you know the first time i got to know of shadow was when uh when was that in 2017 yeah, I think that was in 2017 when Bola Ray went to, you know, to him to interview him. Yeah, Bola Ray, I think I've forgotten the name of the uh, reveal. Yeah, reveal with Bola Ray. Yeah, reveal with Bola Ray. Bola Ray actually went to him to you know, interview him like, yeah. And we all know Chada. Chada is a showman, bro. He is a showboy. Yeah, Chada is a showboy. That was when I got to know of, you know, Nana Bidiako. All this, so I never knew there was a rich man called Nana Bidiako, bro. And yeah, like ever since then, I've kind of admired him. I've kind of admired his intelligence, and you know, I think whenever I see him, like I can't, he kind of believe in what my ideology is personally, what I believe in. Like I kind of think he's the perfect person to execute it. Yeah, I kind of think he's the perfect person who can execute it. And now, Charlie, I know I'm not really, really influential, I'm not influential, but all I do is to, you know, plead to any Ghanaian to, you know, see to you that we vote for Cheddar, like, we give Cheddar, like, we give Cheddar the chance, because all these years, we've been complaining about MPP and NDC, you know, people go, like, MPP, NDC, Chale, these people, whenever, like, I think it's about time because of revolution, like, you know, we can't keep doing the same thing and be expecting, you know, different results, it can never happen, yeah? We need fresh minds. All these years, we've been saying that we need youth. We can't be allowing these old people to, you know, be determining the future of our uh, our country. You know, we need the youth, like people that will, you know, excuse me to say, who will live long to, you know, see the future, not, you know, people who are in their, you know, elites. Uh, and which, of course, no, I'm not saying that uh, older people die before, you know, no. We have so a child who was born today and died. We have people my age that died. We have people who, like, twin in their 20s, in their 30s, in their 40s that die. Like, you know, death doesn't, it's not determined by age. We can always die. But, you know, we are just speaking about, you know, when you grow, like, there are a lot of things that are going on in the current uh, dispensation that you may not be, you know, preview to. Because, like... You keep having the, you know, the old mindset. You keep having the archaic mindset. So we should give the fresh people the chance. And we've never given the fresh people the chance. One thing, and I want you guys to uh, remember that Kwame Kuma became a president in his 40s. And look at the kind of things he did. He came with a fresh mind. And like whenever I'm listening to Cheddar, you know, he's a futuristic uh thinker he thinks of the future he looks into the future and these are the people that we need we don't need people that thinks about today or tomorrow you know and you know at the end of the day they will end up building roads that will not last for even 10 years we need people look at Kwame Nkuma he built the Akosombo dam until then is our main source of electricity when you go to uh I mean Accra I mean Tema yeah when you go to Tema um we have the Tema motorway it has been there for more than 50 years, almost 60 years, and now, like, till date, it's still, like, so are you trying to tell me, like, or after, are you trying to tell me that if not because of Kwame Nkrumah, all these things wouldn't have been seen? Because, you know, all the presidents that came after him, all the leaders that came after him have done nothing, you know, to add up, like, you look at electric, electrical power, look at our Akusumbo down, no, pre apart from President Aku, uh, Ajakum Kufo, no one that anything but did anything better, you know, to add up to our, uh, you know, what and what our electric our electricity. You understand? Like all the people that came after it, like they are kind of slow. Like all the other things I got. Maybe I can say Jerry John Rollins, you know, tried. 
<coughs> Excuse me. Your president Jerry John Rollins tried something. Kufo tried something. Your mama Kufuado is doing something. But I feel like nah, it's not enough. We need a fresh mind. We need like we should give the young guys the chance. All these years we've been saying we need the young guys, we need the young ones, we need the young ones. Let's give the young ones, the younger ones the chance. Meanwhile, we have not been giving them the chance. And I think this is the right time. This is the right time. I feel like this is the right time for us to, you know, try Nana Pibdiako. This is not a time for you to be asking, you know, the source of his riches. All these years, you never asked. All these years, you never asked, you know, the source of his money, the source of whatever. You know, all these years, you never asked. No, all these years, you, you know, it's not about you asking. It's about you making, creating the perception that, okay, now that you want to be president, let's find something to sabotage your dreams. That's how you people are making it seem. That's how you because you know yeah Kennedy Ajap the likes of Kennedy Ajapons and uh, you know the millionaires the likes of this but they've been asked these questions before but with the not not be the Apple case people are just trying to make it look as if now that he is aspiring to become the president of Ghana people they are yeah is aspiring to become the president of Ghana they are just trying to do anything possible to sabotage his chances. Which is not fair, bro. Which is not fair. Which is not fair. Let's just give him the chance. Let's give him the chance. I know, yeah, he might not be perfect. You know, like, because uh, I've listened to one or two interviews. And, you know, he's not perfect. He's not 100%. He's a human being. No human being is 100%, bro. No human being is 100%. But I think we need someone better. You know, whenever there are two bad people, at least there... We, between the two bad peoples, we still have the best one. We still have a good one among them. Whenever there are two good people, we still have the best or the better one among the two. You understand? And that's how, like, that's how I see the Freedom Jacob Caesar. That's how I see Freedom Jacob Caesar. Let's give him the chance. Let's just give him the chance. He's the young, like, he's got the fresh ideas, bro. The new ideas, the new ideology. Yeah. And I think it's about time we cause a revolution and not a military or a revolution in a rebellious way, not a revolution in a violent way, but in a very peaceful way. Yeah, creating a revolution, like causing a revolution in a peaceful way. Because there are a lot of things that we need to change in this country. There are a whole lot of things. And I think, you know, these are the MPP and the NDC kind of feel favored with, you know, these kind of things. You know, the constitutions and these things. And we, the young ones, we, the small boys, are the ones suffering at the end of the day. We, the young ones, are, even though maybe I might not be suffering too much or something. But I feel like, nah, bro. Yeah, like, Charlie, yeah. I think we should give him the chance. We should give him the chance. You know, I'm not trying to preach against any pol other political party or any, you know, because like me, I'm very fair with it. Like I was saying, I'm not here to preach against any other party like MPP or NDC that they've done what and what. But I'm just trying to say that it's about time that we give the third party a chance. Yeah, because, you know, we can't only be relying on two political parties who will come today, tomorrow, and, you know, be doing whatever they want. If a party comes and knows that at least, okay, if I don't do things right and I lose, the possibility of me coming back to power can be 16 years back. They will try to do something good. They will try to work hard. See, they will try to work hard. But if you think that, okay, at least... We only have two political parties, so yeah, after eight years, even if I mess up the economy after eight years, I will surely be voted back. Nah, that, that, that wouldn't, like, they will, that, they will really mess up the economy. They will be, still be doing some things that wouldn't favor us. They will still be doing something with, that wouldn't favor us. But if they know that, oh, if I lose this opportunity, it's going to take me a very long time for me to come, Charlie. They will really sit back and work hard. They'll sit back and work hard. Well, kindly subscribe to this channel, like, comment, and always stay connected. My name is Jimmy Alpha. I'll be back with more fun time, bro. Fun time. Jimmy Ralph. Flat again, see the play on the street with the do things you can't imagine. But boys never play with a high grade. But boys never give up on streets. Depression, killer, we are sweet. Keep grinding, chasing the mullah. You're the 
see how when I ice take danger Never drive my hustle with the bad mind Never say I was no street boy I be good boy turn bad Never tell you back on me If you see me in danger This be the reality But nobody say I get a choice We from there get to a kind of life We nobody say we have a choice Judge me, brother, man. Make you never ever judge me, brother, man. You know, be God, you know, be God, you know, be God. You know, be God, you know. Be